Hello and welcome to Learning Hub. Now, recently, Iran's supreme leader has made a very significant statement regarding Gaza and India. He has claimed that the situation in Gaza is the same as the condition of Muslims in India. This is his exact statement. This is his tweet, which I want to show you. Then we will understand its geopolitical implications. Now, here you can see this tweet from Khamenei, the supreme leader of Iran. In India, many people view him as a spiritual leader as well, especially since he is a significant figure in the Shia Islam sect. He is saying that the enemies of Islam have tried to make us indifferent regarding our shared identity. He is openly talking about the Islamic Ummah at a time when you should remember that such statements need to be seen geopolitically as well. I had uploaded a video a few days ago where I mentioned that there might be a secret nuclear deal between the US and the UK with Iran and Russia. And don't be surprised if Iran shocks the world in the future with an underground nuclear test. He is saying that at present, there is a need for unity among Islamic countries. We, of course, are saying that Muslim countries cannot consider themselves as Muslims if we are indifferent. It doesn't matter to me what is happening. So, he is saying that we cannot be indifferent and must focus on the suffering that a Muslim is enduring. Now, the examples he has given are shocking, and India should object because India does not deserve to be mentioned in such contexts. He is referring to what is happening with Muslims in Myanmar, where the Rohingya issue is ongoing. There is a significant problem there. If we talk about Gaza, over 40,000 people have been killed in Gaza. It is a huge issue. Now, why is there a need to mention India? When comparing the situation in Myanmar and Gaza, India does not deserve to be mentioned in these contexts because the situation in India is not at all like that in Gaza or Myanmar. Iran's supreme leader used to make such comments in 2020. This tweet from 2020 is surprising. He is openly saying that Indian Muslims are in danger and that Muslim suffering is happening in India. These comments were made by Iran's supreme leader in 2020. Later, as you all remember, Iran's president, Ibrahim Raisi, who unfortunately died in a helicopter crash, came into power. I have mentioned several times in my videos that Raisi had a significant role in ensuring that Iran did not have any sensitivity towards India. The supreme leader of Iran used to make such tweets, but under Ibrahim Raisi's time, it stopped. You might recall that when Ibrahim Raisi visited Pakistan, Despite Shabazz Sharif repeatedly mentioning Kashmir in press conferences, he never once mentioned Kashmir himself. I would say India misses Ibrahim Raisi. If he were in power today, he would definitely use his influence to say that if you want to raise issues, other countries have major issues with Muslims. For example, in China, many mosques have been destroyed, and the Muslim population is shrinking. Similarly, Lebanon has its issues. So why mention India? When Iran promotes tourism in India? Yes, you would be surprised. Recently, Iran conducted a tourism roadshow in three major Indian cities. Mumbai, Hyderabad, and Delhi. You can see photos of this event and the article. The Iranian ambassador to India invited Indian tourists to visit Iran, saying that Iran is safe. Iran is promoting tourism, but at the same time, its supreme leader is making such comments. This needs to be stopped. We often see how propaganda against India spreads in countries like Bangladesh. What Pakistan is doing is its own matter. But such comments also damage India's reputation in Muslim-majority countries. Now we need to understand Iran's supreme leader's grand plan. See. He is constantly talking about the Islamic Ummah and the concept of Islamic unity. Protecting the identity of the Islamic Ummah is essential. Iran is saying this because when they conduct nuclear tests or make significant developments related to nuclear weapons, Iran hopes that the Muslim Ummah, which includes all Islamic countries, will back Iran. At that time, it will be interesting to see which Islamic countries condemn Iran and impose sanctions, and which ones support Iran. 
This will be very interesting to see. Constantly, they are saying that whether Shia or Sunni, unity is very important. So, India should clearly address this with Iran. On one hand, you sign agreements and MOUs regarding tourism with us, and this literally happened today. The Iranian tourism agencies signed an MOU with India, allowing Iranian tourists to visit India and Indian tourists to visit Iran. So, if you are doing this, you are admitting that India is a safe country. Otherwise, why would you send tourists to a so-called dangerous country when your supreme leader is making such statements? Similarly, when Iran seeks membership in BRICS or any other group, they need India's help and are thankful for India's assistance. Such statements complicate the relations between the two countries. I hope that S. Jaishankar will raise the issue and question why India is being compared to Gaza. There should be some logic, numbers, or explanations provided as to why such statements were made. This topic will obviously remain in the news, and India's response is expected. I will bring you an updated video after India's response. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell, so you don't miss any new videos. Let us know your thoughts about this video in the comment section down below, and feel free to stay and enjoy it until the end. Also make sure to check out our next highlighted video, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.